Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Golden, inventor of the Physics Forceps. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for buying a set of the Physics Forceps. The days of laying flaps, doing surgery, and taking up to one hour to take a tooth out are over. The days of referring difficult extractions are over. Again, I'd like to thank you very much for buying a set of these remarkable instruments. In understanding the proper use of a physic forcep, you must understand the theory behind it. The theory behind the physics forceps is based on class one physics. What is class one physics? Class one physics is very simple. You put a force here and a counter force here. You roll the tooth out. Conventional instruments don't do that. Conventional instruments put a force here, a force here, and you need a third force to pull that tooth out. When doctors who've done many extractions that have been dentists for many years get a set of physic forceps, they all have to retrain. What does that mean? That means that their arm and their hand has a memory, and that memory wants to squeeze, and that memory wants to pull. The biggest problem doctors have in using these instruments is that they have to retrain their hand and retrain their wrist. Right now, they don't use their wrist. They use their arm. Right now, they squeeze. These instruments, you are not allowed to squeeze. Once you lock the, the instrument on the tooth, it's only your wrist that controls the instrument, which I'm about to demonstrate. I'm gonna take an upper right physics forcep. This is basically used on two, three, four, and five. First, open the instrument wide. Then, engage the beak deep on the lingual aspect of the root. Next, set the bumper at the mucogingival junction. Note the fixed position of the hand on the instrument. Do not squeeze the handles. Slowly apply pressure, rolling in an arc, towards the buckle to accomplish an occlusal lift. Using wrist movement only, disengaging it from the socket. At the first sign of movement, or what is commonly referred to as the pop, stop. The instrument has performed its intended use. Now you can use an instrument of choice to grasp and remove the tooth from the socket. In all extractions, the instrument is not designed to take the tooth out completely. It's designed to move the tooth buckily, stop, use a rongiers, use a hemostat, or use your fingers and take the tooth out the rest of the way. The anterior physic forcep is used on 6 to 11. Again, same technique, same principle. Once again, set the beak and then the bumper using your free hand to help accomplish proper positioning of the instrument. We encourage the use of your free hand during the procedure to maintain stability until the tooth has disengaged. On the contralateral position, this initially may seem slightly awkward at first, but it utilizes the same principle of wrist-only movement. Do not use your arm, and do not squeeze the handles. Simply hold the instrument in position, gradually increasing buckle rotation until you feel the tooth disengage. This is one universal lower. All lower teeth, if you can get to them, which I'm talking about second and third molars, can be taken out by the lower physics forceps. This is a, an anterior tooth. You put the beak and then the bumper. And then you can hold the instrument various ways. You can hold it this way, this way. Some doctors like to put their fingers in the middle and hold it this way. But whatever you do, you cannot squeeze the instrument. 
this is locked on. The bumper should be as far down as possible. And all we do is wait. We wait using torque from our wrist. And that torque will create energy. In every extraction we do, the wrist creates energy, which is called creep, and the tooth eventually will move buckle. So all we're doing right now is waiting. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and the tooth rotates forward. Once again, open the instrument wide. Then, engage the beak deep on the lingual aspect of the root. Next, set the bumper at the mucogingival junction. Slowly apply pressure, rolling in an arc, towards the buckle to accomplish an occlusal lift. Do not hesitate to use your free hand to assist in securing a proper purchase point. Do not squeeze the handles. At the first sign of movement, or what is commonly referred to as the pop, stop. Grasp and remove the tooth from the socket. On all lower extractions, with the exception of the third molars, you will use the universal lower physics forcep. Now for lower molars it's a little different. If you look at the way the type of dents are made, these teeth are curved. Until you really understand the use of the lower physics forceps, we suggest that you take a surgical burr, which this isn't, and cut the tooth in the middle. Separate the two roots. Once you separate the two roots, then it becomes like taking out a bag. Beak and bumper. This tooth in this condition is really a 30 or 40 second, maybe a minute extraction. Place the beak and the bumper. You take them out as if, as if they were individual roots. Wait for the energy to build up and the tooth will rotate out. Do not assume that you can simply section the tooth perpendicular to the occlusal plane. Quite often, this will not necessarily accomplish a separation of the root. Noting the x-ray, angle the drill according to the angle of the root. Take another x-ray to ensure the tooth has been completely sectioned. Use the physics forcep to remove each individual section of the tooth. Many times, if the tooth is completely rotted, what we do is we take a little diamond and we go farther down and create a purchase point. And all we're doing is removing two surface only, not gum and not bone. This allows us to push the beak down a little farther. It allows us to lock it on. Same principle, weight. When removing a severely decayed or broken down tooth, create a purchase point by using a flame-shaped diamond burr. Don't rush the instrument. Let the instrument do its work. Energy builds up. That energy has to go someplace. And that place is down the root, and it separates the root from the bone, and the tooth 
based on wrist movement, will start moving buccally. Any extraction on any one of these teeth can be done in one to two minutes without breaking the buccal bone if you understand the technique and the principles and the theory behind the instrument. Again, wrist movement, class one lever. Thank you. Um, the advantage of these instruments is because um, using a biomechanical advantage to take the teeth out rather than just your strength, it doesn't matter how strong you are. If the instrument is used properly, you get leverage and um, difficult extractions can be done uh, very efficiently. Um, I find that uh, even multi-rooted teeth, for example, maxillary uh, first molars with divergent roots, you set the beak and the bumper on the tooth and you start your rotation and after about 30 seconds the entire tooth will be elevated without having to section the tooth which saves you time and it also saves trauma to the operator as well as to the patient. Um, often multi-rooted teeth have to be sectioned and that can be a little bit more stressful for patients as well as for the doctor. So, um, I think the major advantage is to do simple extractions where they would have been surgical otherwise. Without squeezing the handles, a simple rotation towards the buckle action is used with the wrist. And as soon as you feel resistance, you hold that resistance on the tooth and allowing the periodontal ligament to break down and the bone to expand. And you hold this resistance and you continue to hold it until you feel a little pop. Sometimes this can take anywhere from a few seconds to a couple of minutes. But when you get that little pop, because of the placement of the beak and the bumper at different levels, you get an arc of rotation and the tooth actually elevates slightly up out of the socket. Once you see or feel this little lift, about a millimeter or so, you stop with the physics forcep, you put this instrument down, and you can use any type of pincer device such as a a uh, rongeur or a universal forcep to remove the tooth occlusally. If this is done properly, it prevents any damage to the buccal plate and the teeth can be removed quickly and efficiently and atraumatically. I would say the, the, some good tips would be to go slow, not to try to rush the procedure. Uh, it feels like it takes a long time because you're not doing um, some of the multiple movements that we use with conventional forceps, you're simply holding a resistance on the tooth. So even a few seconds may seem like a long time, but if you count to yourself, it rarely takes more than a minute to get movement of the tooth out of the socket. So just be patient, hold the pressure on there, and remember not to squeeze. I find that being very far back on the handles helps a lot because it increases your leverage and uh, it makes the forceps work more efficiently that way. You don't want to choke up on the handles like you do with some other forceps. You want to be very far back. In an effort to explain hand position in each quadrant, I'd just like to show you how I use uh, the hand position in the forcep uh, in the various quadrants. In the upper right posterior, uh, I like to have a finger between the handles that acts as a spring that allows me to vary the hand distance and so in the upper right, I can place the bumper, position the beak. You can notice the hand position I'm using allows me to vary that distance, whatever I need that the anatomy determines, then I can provide the rotation pivot point. So that would be an upper right hand position. An upper left hand position is going to be somewhat similar. But again, I've got a finger in between the handles to allow for uh, some variability of beak position. But then, positioning the beak, again, delivering uh, at least initial luxation uh, with a pivot point. Again, it's not squeezing. You've got to get past that. That's a very difficult given our, our dental history. But uh, you can vary the pivot point here just by moving your hand. Once it's set, this hand position is fixed. At that point, then, you can provide delivery. For the lower arch, the lower arch, lower left posterior, again, I've got a, a finger positioned between the beaks. I'll lock one handle in between my thumb, the other off to the side, then can position accordingly. For the lower right, that's when I'll put I put three fingers between, hold it between my thumb and my baby finger, 
and deliver this way. So that, that's a lower right hand position. The bumper needs to rest on buckle bone. When you're in the posterior, that buckle position brings the bumper quite a bit towards the occlusal table and out towards the buckle. And if I could demonstrate that here with a second, third molar forcep, you can see that the bumper is quite a bit towards the occlusal table. So when you rotate, there's a vector of lift greater than there's a vector of buckle tooth movement. But when you get in the anterior, the, there's quite a bit of undercut involved with uh, the buckle bone. And so if you position the bumper in the anterior area, that undercut causes there to be quite a bit of buckle vector, buckle torque, if you will. There's lift, which is the point of the forcep, but there's also buckle, uh, a buckle vector of force. So what I've done in my technique is I will take gauze and fold it, maybe take a couple of pieces of gauze, and fold it and rest that in the vestibule to eliminate the undercut. And in eliminating the undercut, I get more occlusal or lift force and less buckle vector. And I'll see if I can demonstrate that for you. The, um, the gauze is sitting in the vestibule, and then the forcep bumper is put in position. But with the wad of gauze there, we eliminate the undercut, basically. So that now, when you're using the instrument, you get a higher amount of lift and less buckle force direction. So uh, I find I use that more and more. Now, again, the point of the forcep is not to deliver the tooth, but rather to provide initial movement. Once you get the tooth to move a millimeter or two, I deliver it with a rangeur or a conventional forcep.